Despite having nearly all of the pieces needed to discover the true identity of the elusive Sith Lord known as Darth Sidious, Yoda and the Jedi Council were never able to put the pieces together until it was too late. There were however people who were able to put the pieces together and discover Palpatine's true plans for Order 66. These included Clone Trooper 5s who was killed trying to reveal the truth, Clone Trooper Kicks who was captured by Dooku after learning the truth and frozen for 50 years, and even Thrawn himself. So let's break down how Thrawn tried to warn Anakin about Order 66 and the impending doom of the Republic. Before we dive in, make sure you're subscribed for more awesome Star Wars lore content just like this. Very late in the Clone Wars, one of Padme's good friends and handmaidens named Duja came across a nefarious Separatist operation on the Outer Rim world of Batu, where the current Duke of Sereno, known as Soha, was using a local cantina there as a transport point for equipment and materials. And Batu is also the location of Galaxy's Edge for those of you who have been there. What Duja discovered was that the Separatists, including Count Dooku, along with his fellow Serenian Solha, were using the cantina on Batu to transport those materials to the planet Mokivja, where a brand new and devastating battle droid design was being tested. This battle droid model would easily sway the tide of the war to the Separatists if it were to be mass produced. When attempting to report this information back to Padme so that it could be relayed to the Republic, Duja was tragically killed by the Separatists after they discovered her presence. Luckily, a small message was able to reach Padme informing her of the operation. After hearing of the Separatist dealings on the planet, Padme decided that she needed to visit herself and attempt to find her lost handmaiden. As a result, she raced out to the Outer Rim in her H-type Nubian yacht, which as you can guess, attracted quite a lot of attention. After making up a cover story to mask her true intentions while visiting the planet, she was directed to the cantina in question and horribly found that her handmaiden had been laid in a funeral pyre outside, ready to be cremated and ready to have all of the evidence destroyed. After managing to keep her emotions under control, she returned to her handmaiden's ship and found that Duja had uncovered something massive. The existence of an entire Separatist factory on Mokivja which could devastate the Republic's clone army. After learning this, she hopped back into her ship and raced out to Mokivja, not caring about the consequences and not telling anybody where she had gone. This included Anakin, who began to get very worried after not hearing from her for a very long time. As a result, with Padme seemingly having disappeared, Anakin rushed over to Batu to investigate. Anakin was panicked and worried about his missing wife, but he would do anything he could to locate her and punish those responsible for taking her. After arriving into the orbit of Batu to begin the search, Anakin came across another starship piloted by a strange but imposing blue man from the Chiss Ascendancy. His name was Thrawn. After talking about the situation for a small amount of time, Thrawn decided that he would join Anakin's noble mission to find Padme. Soon after, they travelled down onto the surface of the planet and came across Padme's starship. After a quick search of the vessel, the pair were directed to the Black Spire outpost, which again you would be familiar with if you've been to Galaxy's Edge, and immediately found the Separatist connected cantina. The Chiss and the Jedi then walked into the bar and questioned the owner about Padme and Dooja's disappearance, but the owner claimed he knew nothing about it, denying having ever seen them. Moments later, however, the mugs placed on the bar exploded and toxic gas immediately released into the cantina, causing Anakin and Thrawn to gasp out for air. Only seconds after this, four armed Separatists who had just followed the two into the cantina popped out and attacked them, but Anakin and Thrawn were quickly able to get their bearings and obliterate the pathetic Separatists. After doing this, Anakin put the uniform of Thrawn on the dead body of one of the Separatists to use as a decoy as they escaped. Definitely a possible war crime, but we won't mention it. Soon after, they found out about the Separatist factory on Mokivja and immediately set off to rescue Padme. Once the pair touched down at the factories of Mokivja and entered the main battle droid production area, they were confronted by a group of B2 super battle droids. Although there was something off about these units. As Anakin attempted to slice the droids in half just like he had done many times in the past, his lightsaber completely failed on him, refusing to cut through and even short it out. Anakin was stunned by this but waited until his blade could turn back on, this time trying a new strategy. He started deflecting blaster bolts back onto the droids, but shockingly found that when the bolts hit the mysterious battle droids, they didn't do any damage. They instead shimmered and dissolved into their plating. At this point, Anakin and Thrawn were completely flawed as they had never seen anything like this from a Separatist droid, but continued on anyway, taking cover and trying to figure out how to take them down. Being his usual self, Anakin decided that the best approach to take down these droids was the most aggressive one. He wanted to focus on the photoreceptors or eyes of the droid and poke them out with his lightsaber, believing that these spots wouldn't be covered in whatever substance is protecting these units. Anakin then swiftly took down the droids by lunging his lightsaber straight through their eyes, but they couldn't just let such a unique and mysterious droid go unexplained. Thrawn then led the search for more information before coming across a bin of fibrous metallic material in the assembly wing of the factory. Anakin, yet again being himself, placed his lightsaber straight into the bin of fibers to see what would happen, and instantly his lightsaber shorted out, just like it had against the battle droids not long ago. Having seen this, Thrawn knew exactly what the material was. 
The material was made out of the famed Quartosis, which terrified the Jedi Order for many years. The pair then figures out that it was this material that was being woven and mixed into the armor plating of the B2 battle droids, creating a brand new variant known as the CB3 Quartosis battle droid. Thrawn then went on to explain that the extremely high energy absorption and electric flow of the material allowed it to both absorb the energy of lightsabers and blaster bolts, as well as short out the circuitry of a Jedi Saber, similar to what happened to Darth Vader when he was confronted by an Order 66 survivor. Link in the pinned comment to that awesome story. What shocked Thrawn, however, was that the Separatists figured out a way to weave the Quartosis fibers into the armor of the battle droids, making them pretty much invincible against both Jedi Generals with their lightsabers and the clone troopers with their blasters. The rich Quartosis deposits on Mokivja made for the perfect location to set up this secret factory, ready to spring on the Republic and turn the tide of the war. Now after this, instead of doing what most Jedi would do, which is destroy the factory and prevent the mining of Quartosis, Anakin and Thrawn thought a little bit more long term. They instead wanted to sabotage the Quartosis threads on the production line before they were woven into the battle droids plating, making them ineffective on the battlefield. Doing it this way meant that the Separatists wouldn't notice the issue before it was far too late. On top of that, they might also carry extreme confidence going into a battle, believing their droids were invincible when really they were not. This plan, however, was very quickly shattered when Thrawn and Anakin found something chilling. They discovered a small section of the factory dedicated not to the production of battle droids, but to clone trooper armor, and not just any clone trooper armor. Quartosis infused Phase 2 armor. Upon seeing this, the two were shocked and bewildered, wondering what on Kamino would the Separatists need with clone trooper armor that was resistant to lightsabers. Anakin then floated the idea that maybe Dooku and the Separatists were planning a massive infiltration of the clone army, where they would sneak past defenses by pretending to be clone troopers. And as for the Quartosis infused part, Anakin suggested that they might be trying to infiltrate the Jedi Temple, where of course they would face huge amounts of lightsabers. Moments later, Anakin sensed the lost Padme and finally knew that they were in the right place. He jetted off to rescue her, but Thrawn couldn't shake that eerie feeling that something wasn't right. He had been a very careful observer of the tactics of both sides during the war and didn't think this made any sense. Thrawn was so troubled by this discovery that he implored Anakin to slow down and deeply think about this. It really was a matter of life or death for the Republic. Anakin, though, was not very receptive, and the reason that Thrawn cared so much is that he needed a strong ally like the Republic to assist the Chiss Ascendancy, although with this threat looming over their head, Thrawn didn't deem the Republic to be too stable. Having seen this quartosis infused clone trooper armor and not wanting to risk the infiltration of the Jedi Temple, Anakin changed his mind about simply sabotaging it and instead destroyed the entire factory and all of its production. And by the way, this destruction went horribly wrong, because Anakin failed to account for the Quartosis deposits around the planet, causing an explosive cataclysm across the entire world, shredding it to its core. But this didn't happen until Anakin and Thrawn left. So yeah, Anakin literally destroyed an entire planet. Sometime after this, a sense of relief washes over Anakin as he successfully rescues Padme, and Thrawn is also very pleased that things went well. As Anakin and Thrawn are about to leave and go their separate ways, however, the issue of the clone trooper armor is still racing in his mind, and he simply can't let it go. Because of this, he tells both Anakin and Padme that from all of his military experience, infiltration attacks pretty much never work. Thrawn went on to state that the true purpose of that armor was likely much, much more ominous, and likely involved the Jedi Order directly. Padme herself even became very concerned with Thrawn's honest and sincere warning, but Anakin simply brushed it off and was happy to have Padme back safely. The three then went their separate ways, but Thrawn never let his findings that day go. Many years later, Darth Vader and Thrawn were forced to team up once again, and did actually return to the planet of Makivja, where they had their troubling adventure all those years ago. On the planet, Darth Vader reveals to Thrawn that he was in fact right to be so troubled by the Quartosis Weave clone armor. The factory was actually part of Palpatine's plan to ensure Order 66 could not fail, by equipping the clones with armor that could not be slashed or cut by the Jedi's lightsabers. Unfortunately for Palpatine, Anakin screwed that up for him, but Order 66 went very well anyway. If Anakin had managed to put Fives' warning together with Thrawn's concerns, it's likely he would have figured out Order 66 before Palpatine could turn him to the dark side, and possibly prevented Order 66. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.